Wow. Never get so hey, Martin here. Coming to you with another Martin Chess video. Today we're gonna to be talking about Batman Hush. This isn't going to be much of a movie review type thing. This is more gonna be along the lines of a um what do you call it? A let's just call it a comic book comparison type video. We're gonna be comparing the movie to the source material written by uh, Jeff Loeb, art by Jim Lee. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Spoilers! That's what we're going to do. Obviously, there are going to be spoilers on it because I just said it. If you haven't seen the movie or read the comic book because you've been living under a rock, you might want to click away because there are a lot of serious spoilers. But if you have seen the movie, well, let's just dive right in. Cue our stomach music. We've done this dance for so long. Like the view? It's the only thing you'll catch tonight. Batman Hush is arguably one of the best comic book storylines in the Dark Knight's 80 year history chest. And after 17 years, DC has finally given Hush an animated adaptation. The movie in many ways improved over some of the flaws from the, uh, from the source material, but it does make its own mistakes in doing that, in that process. Hush is very much a good Batman movie. It really is. While there is the central mystery of Hush's secret identity and his relationship to Bruce Wayne, it's less of a crime movie and more of a superhero movie, especially with the appeal of seeing so many fan-favorite characters that we've seen over the last 80 years crammed into one story. It's really great. He's been one step ahead of me the whole time. Tick tock, trails going cold. This just gets better and better. Hush, Batman. Hush. Now, when it comes to movies based off books, I've learned years ago that if you are watching a movie based on a book, and you're like, oh, well, I read the book, so the movie should be good. Yeah, you're most likely going to be disappointed. Although I was really hoping that Hush would be one of those few exceptions, especially since the killing joke was so good. Now, first off, let me just say that Batman Hush the movie cannot be 100% true to the source. Because it takes place within this new 52 kind of animated universe. Uh, Justice League Dark, Son of Batman, um, Justice League War, Atlantis, all those other movies. Hush takes place after the events of the death of Superman, which is also in continuity with all those other New 52 type movies. So, a lot of characters that got axed off in other movies like Talia al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul, uh, Killer Croc, and the Son of Batman those characters are not in this movie they had to replace those characters which is why edward dupree got kidnapped by bane instead of killer croc like he did in the comics so that and actually i don't have a problem with that because they're keeping within the continuity of their particular universe they have one bruce wayne one batman one clark Kent, one superman they're being smart they're not changing anything Batman the Killing Joke was a great film and more comic book accurate because it was a standalone film. It wasn't a part of any other series. But Hush takes place in a universe that was already established with Justice League War and Son of Batman. So before they came out with this and other uh, movies that preceded, they've axed off characters. So I'm fine with that, staying within their own continuity. Wait, you 
You're not just some guy in a bat costume, are you? Are you freaking kidding me? What? Nobody asked you to prom, so now you dress as a bat and prowl around your parents' basement? What's this do? Huh? No buttons. I assume it works off concentration. How'd you do that? You weren't concentrating. You won't do that again. Unless I... Yeah, I think it's better that they made this movie within the continuity they had instead of making another standalone Batman film. And they did the same thing back in the day with the DCAU. The DCAU nailed it first. They had one Batman, one Bruce Wayne, all the characters stayed the same. They had crossovers, everything was good. It wasn't all this different redesigns and different actors. Back then, I could simply say Kevin Conroy was Batman, and that was that. Now, I could say Christian Bale is Batman. Someone could easily argue and say, no, Ben Affleck is Batman, or no, Bruce Greenwood is Batman. It, it was much simpler back then. They kept it all the same, and that is one of the ingredients in a successful franchise. They kept it simple, and it kept down on confusion. One of the reasons why DC is beating Marvel when it comes to their animation. Because they actually do what Marvel is doing with their movies. They just do it with their animation. They don't do it with their movies, which I don't understand. But it's whatever, you know. You're in my chair. Yeah. Guess I am. Where the devil have you been? I had some stuff to take care of. Enigma's overrated, especially at 3 a.m. You could have called. I made you some soup, but it's cold. Sorry. Didn't mean to worry you. I was worried about Gotham. If Batman's not around... I've got it covered. Always. Yeah, man. Those were the days. Anyways, back to Hush. Now, stand within their own kind of New 52 continuity, animation, universe, whatever you want to call it, isn't always good. And the they try to be original while pertaining to an old story, try to put their little spin on it. That is what probably destroys this movie the most. The movie's good, don't get me wrong, but mm, it's not beating the comic book. One of the things that I had a problem with in this movie was the relationship between Batman and Catwoman. They had the same relationship in the comic books, but in the movie, it's like times 10. You could just call this movie the Bat and the Cat instead of Batman Hush. In the comics, after Catwoman stole the money after Batman got done fighting Killer Croc, he's chasing her. Hush cuts his line through the air. He falls several feet, cracks his skull, breaks his uh, his shoulder bone. Catwoman still goes on because she's under mind control by Poison Ivy. She still goes to deliver the money while Batman is crashed in an alley somewhere about to be beat up by a whole bunch of thugs. Is not looking good for him. He can't even move. His skull is cracked. The Huntress is the one who saves him. But in the movie, it's Catwoman. How does she do that? Does she break free of Poison Ivy's spell for a few seconds? Back off, boys. He's mine. How about we cut him in two, and then you? After we're done with you, he means. Naughty, naughty. There's a three strikes law in this state, boys. That was one. Two. Three. Know some guys pay for that in the movie they really pushed the envelope with Batman and Catwoman's relationship they pushed it to the point where Bruce and Selina get so much screen time together it greatly diminishes the story and Hush himself the secret identity of Hush it's already bad enough that Hush is not who we all thought it was going to be but his character arc is greatly diminished because of 
how much Bruce and Selena spend time together. And I don't know if they had them spending so much time together to build up their character art because this is the first time we've seen Catwoman in this particular animated universe. Maybe that's why. I'm not sure. I just think that it greatly diminished the comic book story. Care of Ivy? Nope. work together on this. What's the address? Oh, I'm not done with my demands. Tick tock, trails going cold. We've done this dance for so long. Aren't you just the least bit curious? Now, I will say one thing the comics did that the movie smartly leaves out. In the comics, they made Batman kind of sprung after he kissed Selina. And I'm not even kidding about that. Literally, after that night that he kissed Selina, the next six pages is Bruce thinking about how he kissed her over and over and over again. Not panels, the next six pages. And... It's like, jeez, Batman, you're a dork. I, I thought you were a playboy. You should be used to this. It is, it's really silly. The next six pages is him thinking about it over and over and over again as he's fighting crime, as he's talking to his friends, everything. The movie smartly leaves that out because nobody wants to see that over and over again. It's like, yeah, you kissed her. Big deal. So that was a good thing. They smartly leave out the whole sprung thing, but they also leave something else out which wasn't smart. They left out the flashback sequences. In the comic book, Hush, during the whole story, we constantly see these beautiful oil pastel flashback sequences that gives us more information about who Tommy Elliot is, uh, more depth to Bruce Wayne's childhood before that one horrible night, and it gives more depth to the story it gives way more depth to the story in the comic book and in the movie there's a part where uh they're at a concert harley quinn shows up and batman ends up fighting the joker outside in an alley the joker seemingly kills tommy elliott and batman goes off and it's not just about tommy elliott it's about him crippling batgirl what he did to barbara gordon and the killing joke he shot barbara gordon crippling her for life she can never be batgirl again it's also about what he did to Jason Todd. He murdered Robin. He killed Robin. This is revenge about all the stuff that the Joker's done. But this is where continuity screws it up. Because in the movie, Jason Todd doesn't exist in this universe. Barbara Gordon is still a kid. The killing joke hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, we get the same fight. And Batman still brutally beats Joker to within an inch of his life. But it doesn't... It's not... It's not as meaningful because not only do we not have those two important characters, we also don't have any flashback sequences. It would be tight if Batman was fighting the Joker and we saw those flashback sequences of the horrible things Joker did. It it, it just doesn't give it the same depth. It's, it's cool. It's a cool fight scene, but it doesn't have the same impact like it did in the comic books. That doesn't even sound right, does it? <laughs> Batsy, I was in a basement until five minutes ago. I'm also looking for Harley. Have you seen her? Now look, I don't mean to nitpick here. The movie doesn't have to be 100% comic book accurate. Most animated superhero films aren't. 
So honestly, I can forgive some stuff. I can forgive the lack of flashback sequences from Bruce's childhood and Batman's early days in his crime fighting career. I can even forgive swapping out Killer Croc for Bane. But the one thing I cannot forgive is them changing the character of Hush. Changing him completely. I can't believe it. In the Hush comic books, we all knew who it was. Dr. Thomas Elliot, the surgeon, and Bruce's Bruce Wayne's childhood friend, Tommy Elliot. In the comics, Tommy wants revenge on Bruce because, basically because Bruce's dad saved his mom's life. Bruce Wayne's parents died when he was eight years old, and so he inherited everything. The boy billionaires, they call them. Before that happened, Tommy tried to kill his parents, so like he would be like Bruce, inheriting everything. He obviously didn't love his parents. He uh, arranged a car crash and tried to kill his mom and dad. Well, um, Dr. Thomas Wayne, Bruce's dad, saved his mom's life. So he didn't receive a dime. He wasn't like Bruce. Bruce was orphaned as a kid, and he had a lot of money. Tommy wanted that, and he didn't get it. So basically, he, br he blames Bruce Wayne because of his dad saving his mom's life. I have a job for you, Batman. Bring me Bruce Wayne, or I bring down this tower. Why Wayne? The two of you are friends. That brat's family destroyed me. And now, I will destroy him. The Wayne stood by you. Ah, oh, yes, the great surgeon Thomas Wayne. To think he was once my idol. Until he ruined everything. He did all he could to save your parents after the crash. I'm sorry you lost your father. But he saved your mother's life. He denied me what was rightfully mine. The car crash wasn't an accident. It was you. You wanted to kill them. But now, forget all that, because that's the comics. In the movie, Hush's secret identity is the Riddler. That's right, Edward Nashton. Not a new character, an old one that's just been recycled. Which seriously diminishes this entire story. Look, if this was just a standalone Batman film, then this will be fine. But this is supposed to be based on the book. When you have Hush in your title, you can't just do anything you want. Why would they even have Tommy Elliot in this movie? He serves no purpose. He was actually a good guy in this universe. And he really died. That's kind of messed up. In the comics, he faked his death. He really died. It's like, what were they trying to do? Pay homage to the source material? This whole film that Tommy was in, in the beginning and stuff, he's... You gotta read the book, but he did everything he did in the book, so you thought he was bad this whole time. He's actually a good guy. It's like, where they... Forget the homage crap. Just give us what we ask for. Batman, hush. Not Batman forever. <laughs> I, I can't believe they did that. Trying to throw us a curveball. No, that was, it was just a swing and a miss. You know, but the movie does have a better ending. I'll say that for least. You talk too much. I repeat, what do you think of me now? That you're the same insecure sea lister you were before you went into the Lazarus pit. Big talk from a dead man! You tell riddles a fifth grader could solve and you call yourself the Riddler. The sheer lack of imagination is staggering. You take that back! A one gimmick hack. The joke of the underworld. Damn you! Shut up! You think you've got the best of Ivy, Joker, and Bane? Once they find out Hush was the Riddler? They'll hunt you down like a dog. It won't be pretty. I'm not scared of them anymore! I'll kill them just like I'm going to kill you! The effects of the pit don't last forever. I'm betting even now you can feel it. 
All that strength and genius slipping away just when you need it most. So, I know I threw a lot of punches at it, but overall, Batman Hush is a great film. I actually would give it 4 out of 5 stars. I'd even say it's worth watching twice. I like the movie. I like the continuity it's in. I like Jason O'Mara as Batman. He's not as masculine and threatening as Kevin Conroy, but then again, who is? He's pretty good. A close second. But compared to the comics, it's not beating the source material. No way. Like I said, it does have a better ending. And I like some of the things they play with. I, I kind of like how they did some of the characters. Um, but overall, story, as far as the actual story go, it was way too Bruce and Selina heavy. Seriously. If they trimmed down the bat and the cat relationship screen time, they could have added in way more stuff from the comics and made it even more closer to the source material. Even Damien takes a hilarious jab at Bruce for it. Hello, Damien. Titus. Pennyworth tells me you're romantically involved with a criminal now? Ex-criminal. And it's only a date. There are no ex-criminals, father. Only ones who aren't breaking the law at the moment. She's not like that anymore. Damien, I... Look. I understand. This never-ending mission of ours is a lonely endeavor. If this trollop provides some carnal release, so be it. Trollop? Your slang skills need work. But I needn't bring up your past poor choices in women, including but not limited to my mother. Damien, I'm not- Not that I'm on great here, mind you. However, I must insist that you use protection. And another thing, cover your drink. Goodbye, Damien.